to the fourth edition of the New Bernice Police Department's 21st Century Policing. I'm Lieutenant Barefoot, and I'm the training director over the academy and also the range. I'm Sergeant Bartley. Um, I am the assistant academy director. Um, I'm going to be moving out to our range to be the range master um, later on this month. We'll be spending a little bit of time today. We'll be talking about what we do here at the New Bernice Police Department. There will also be a follow-up on Thursday, October 22nd at noon for a question and answer with us. Um, so we'll be on Facebook for that. All right, so first we'd like to start um, with what we do in the police academy. Uh, the Newport News Police Department began running its own academy um, some time ago. We broke away from the regional academy. Um, and our academy is roughly six months long. Um, we cover a variety of topics, everything from firearms training to defensive tactics to um, search and seizure, and, and a lot more topics aside from that. The Department of Criminal Justice Services require us um, to provide a certain amount of training. Our academy takes that training and then goes well beyond. Um, we believe in providing everything a young officer needs to be effective on the street. We also provide, during the academy, we have a community week um, that is approximately five days long. We have the recruits go out into the neighborhoods. They actually do canvassing and they get to know who they're going to serve in the future. They knock on the door, um, they talk to the individuals, they find out actually uh, what kind of problems and what positives we have are going on with the department at the same time. We also go out to other neighborhoods that are in need in reference to landscaping issues, um, aesthetic needs for the neighborhood, and they'll go out and they'll clean up, they'll paint, they'll work with other community members. We also have a program where we have a group of individuals, a coalition group that comes in. Um, they'll talk with the recruits um, within a room for the day in reference to how they feel policing is going, um, positive and negative effects of um, interactions with police. And it's a honest conversation between the recruits and also the community members of what they expect from the recruits. It's been enlightening and we've enjoyed having that dialogue. We've also had another uh, church which actually um, dedicated a uh, field in reference of uh, plants and vegetables, in reference to Katie Thine, who passed away, unfortunately, in a line of duty death, um, and that was Parkview Baptist. Um, that was very meaningful. We had a dedication during that community week, and we also have Pastor Cheeks that heads that up, and we give a lot of credit for Pastor Cheeks, so thank you. Most recently, um, we had the Kalia national accreditation agency that comes down and then what they'll do is they'll look at three aspects of the department one of those aspects involves the academy they were very interested when we had our assessment back in november of 2019 um, it was in reference to how we have our um, recruits work out we have our own facility we measure what they do um, they were very interested in that aspect secondly they were also um, interested in our crisis incident stress management team. We offer that training during the academy, and that's for any individuals that might be having any issues, um, past, present. Um, it could have happened before they joined the department, and we have a list of individuals they can speak to. The last thing they were very interested in was also the active threat training. We provide that. It's a week-long training we do with the recruits um, during the academy. And it puts them in situations on how to respond to active threats as in a mass shooting or something of that nature that happens in the public. All right, so I've already talked a little bit about the academy and field training, what the new recruits get when they come in. Um, but it's important to understand that the police department doesn't stop its training with the academy. Uh, we do yearly in-service training for all of our sworn personnel. Um, the training consists of things like use of force training, de-escalation training. Um, we do a lot of stuff that is scenario based. Um, the idea being that we teach our officers how to better interact with the public. Um, you know, this department has always had a very good relationship with our community and our training is geared toward that. 
Um, we want to keep our officers abreast of national topics, things that could become an issue for them on the street, and so we provide training for them to mitigate those risks. Um, <clears throat> just to give you an example, every two years the Department of Criminal Justice Services requires us to have 40 hours of in-service training. Our department goes well beyond that. We generally do 40 hours of training for every officer every year, which means we're doing twice the training that the Department of Criminal Justice Services requires because we want our officers um, to be the best and we want them to serve our community as well as they possibly can. We work with the community quite a bit. That We've done that ever since I've been here in my 25 years. We keep on evolving with our training and we realize that we need more training in other areas um, concerning mental health, autism. We have a two hour class that we do with autism, which is in the academy right now. We also do that and we hope to do that in our yearly in service. We have fantastic instructors here who are passionate about the subject. Mental health wise, we know that individuals in crisis um, is occurring more often now with all the stress of COVID and all the stresses of losing unemployment at this time. And we want to make sure that we are treating individuals appropriately and not using force unnecessarily that we don't need to use and that we're speaking with individuals and listening to their concerns. We have a crisis incident stress management team. Um, which I've been head of for approximately two to three years now. And we, we, in a nutshell, what we do is we train our individuals to be able to talk to other people that are in crisis, not only on the department, but within the community. So something else I wanted to mention, I know we've hit on mental health issues, people in stress and crisis, not, not only employees, but the community members themselves. Currently, we have a program um, which is very familiar to Community Service Board, which they implemented. It's called Crisis Intervention Training. Um, we've been doing that for a number of years, probably over 10 years at least. We have trainers on the department that interact with our mental health professionals, and we want to provide the best care we can when we go to these calls for service and, and realize this is a crisis situation, and maybe it's not a law enforcement situation, where somebody's broken the law, but somebody that needs help, and we get them in the hospital as soon as possible. And most recently, what we are gonna do is we're gonna have a train a trainer school uh, for crisis intervention, and we'll have those individuals come back, and our idea is to have everybody train in crisis intervention within a two-year period. Um, we already offer that in snippets, but not enough to all the employees currently. So that is a huge goal for this department, and I think we can get it done. I also wanted to add um, some more topics that, that the trainers do and also the department receives in training. Uh, one of the topics that's very important is implicit bias. We just had a recent school in reference to having 10 individuals in our department that will be instructors for implicit bias. We've had that instruction since 2014. However, we wanted to update that training. We're always evolving. So we had that training just recently, less than two months ago. And we hope to have everybody on the department train in that field within the next year. So by 2022, everybody on this department will be trained with implicit bias. Also, the academy to everybody on the department is currently employed here. That also goes into cultural diversity, which is very important to us. We have online training we do with that. It is about a two to three hour block. We make sure everybody gets that. All right. So. I hope we've provided you guys with some good information today. I hope you've learned something from us. Um, as a training unit, that is our goal, to provide information and learning. Uh, so we're sure that some of the things we said will probably spark some questions in your minds. So if you could, join us on Facebook Live on Thursday, October 22nd at noon, um, where myself and the lieutenant will be there to provide answers to any and all questions that you have. I appreciate your time and watching this video, and like Sergeant Bartley said, I hope you join us a week later at noon on the 22nd for Facebook Live. And I just also want to state that, believe me, you are here with a professional department that's dedicated to the citizens.